Wow. Long time no see, you legendary savages. You got 133 subscribers that actually watch me. You all are legends. I love each and every one of you. This winter, I, I said I'm going to get me a Harley to ride with my son. Didn't really want a sports or nothing like that, even though I'm not biased against any sports. I don't, I don't care, you know. Quick enough to go get hurt, and I'm not, I'm not here to fly around or nothing like that. So it didn't matter to me. But people are crazy on this marketplace. Uh, you know, dealing with these people on Facebook and all that, you think you're the last sane person on earth. So the, I posted all my toys, my four-wheelers, um, those Suzuki's up for sale and everything. I had to get rid of all these toys. Don't have the room for this stuff. And I get offered cats. I offered me a cat for my four-wheeler. These people are offering dumb stuff. It's unbelievable. Waste of my time. So I'm trying to find me a bike. Everything's outrageous. I mean, but 10, 15 years ago, you pick up a bike for cheap. And I'm a humble guy, so I sold my stuff for too cheap. My Kawasaki LTD 454 Bobber. Good friend of mine, my buddy Dylan. Legend, dude. I gotta love that dude. He blessed me with that bike so I could ride with my son. I fixed it all up. And I was like, okay, I'll get, I'll sell that. So the kid that came and bought it, awesome kid. I know he's going to love that bike. Too. And I figured I'd save up some money. Been doing a lot of side jobs, constantly working all winter on people's projects. Saved up some money. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll stay on Facebook, Craigslist, all that, 24-7. And I looked every day off this month for me. And I found a 1997 Dyna and Softail. So I was like, oh, I got to get it. Well, I was up all night fixing the client's four-wheeler underneath the carport. Busting my ass on that. And I was tired. I was like, ah, oh, grab me a few hours of sleep. I'll jump on that Facebook. I'll message the guy. So yeah, messaged the guy about the Dyna. And told him I could be there in the morning. Cash in hand. And I overslept. He messaged me at 7 o'clock in the morning. I woke up at 8. I was like, darn, I uh, missed out on that one. So I said, don't worry about it, Pops. You'll find something else. So I was looking on there and looking and looking. And as time goes by, I was getting desperate. And my old man said, well, my buddy has a Heritage, uh, 2002 Heritage, 22,000 miles on it. Real nice. He was in a little fender bender up front. The fender got scratched. He had it repainted. And that's another problem is they're kind of a big bike. I cruised my dad's heritage over here a few times and this is a heavy bike, but I and the way me and my son ride, it's like enthusiast, inspirational ride. We could like to dip into the throttle and everything, go into the turns and all that good stuff. And I just figured a big bike, you know, more for touring and all that. I don't really need nothing like that. Even though it is nice, I would love to make a Cholo style bike out of it. That would be sick. So, thinking about that, and I said, well, it ain't going to go nowhere. He don't have it on the marketplace or nothing like that. So, let me look around. And I came across a, which one was it next? Um, what was it? Mm, man, there's a bunch of them. Okay, a guy stopped over for my four-wheeler, my Kawasaki Mojave, to buy it. And I, he was talking about, oh, I don't know, I got to talk to the wife. Well, I know what it means or what you don't want it or something like that for $1,200. Damn good running four-wheeler. I ain't going to give it away. And he said, well, I got a Sportster. Uh, 97 or 98 Sportster, all white, beautiful, 1200 kit. He had all paperwork and everything, beautiful bike. He said, I was going to let it go for 2500 bucks. Yeah, I didn't like the tank on it. It was real nice, so I wasn't going to chop it all up and paint it. And I don't want a white bike or anything like that and white frame and i just felt like i'd be ruining that bike let somebody else have it so i let that one slide and then another bike came up uh my uh, my dad's buddy again a different guy had a 1970 i want to say 78 shovel head chopper out of american iron magazine and I'd seen the magazine. I was like, oh, man, I got to have that. My son's got the old iron head. That'd be sick. Got to get me a shoulder head. That'd be cool as hell. He ripped it all apart. It's been sitting apart in his garage. He painted over the beautiful paint job that was on it that was in the magazine all black. 
and he wanted like 4500 four grand. And I was like, man, that's pretty expensive for a basket case, especially a shovel head. I mean, God, I'd probably be into it too much if it needed any parts and everything. I, I don't know about all that. So I was looking around. I figured I'd keep that one in mind. Hold on, let me make sure I'm still recording. Oh, yeah, we're good. And Harold Balder's dead. Am I still recording? Yes. So I was looking at another bike on Facebook. Awesome deal. This is a good one. Oh, man, did I burn a bridge on this one, too. Um, a 2009 Street Bob, 9,000 miles on it. He said it sat for three years. He hasn't been riding it. The tires were flat. I went there. Some shingles off of a roof fell onto it. Scratched the paint oblivion, the, the turn signal. It, it was pretty bad. But I didn't care. That's what I was going to do. I was going to paint it, you know. That, I like to do my little fancy paint jobs on it. That's perfect. $4,000, he said. I was like, oh, that ain't bad. I said, if it comes down to, well, I over the months, I... I got sick, I had to go to the hospital because my health hadn't been too damn good, so I had some bills to pay, now I'm down to three grand to find a damn bike, I'm like, this is going to be impossible, so I said, if the bike doesn't sell, and you'd be willing to take $3,000, I'll head your way immediately, two days go by, he calls me, I was like, oh man, I woke up, you know, son, I seen that, I was like, we got to go, I got to go get this bike immediately, so... I go there, I'm looking at the bike, and that's what, I seen the scrapes were pretty bad, but of course I didn't care. He said it needed a battery. I bought a, a brand new battery, fully charged, sitting over there. I brought that with me, and I threw it in there, and the bike doesn't want to crank over too well. So I was a little skeptical, and I called up the old man. I said, well, A, the bike ain't riding. It was, mind you, it was 28 degrees. I was going to ride the bike back from Sandusky to Ohio, uh, Amherst, Ohio. It was probably about a 36-minute ride on that bike. I was going to freeze. I don't care. I'm, I want that bike. It wouldn't start. So I called my old man. I said, hey, can I get a trailer? Can you think you get a trailer? Thought you some money or something like that. And it wasn't going to fall through. I couldn't get find a trailer. So I said, you know what? I'm probably going to have to pass this one up. Crazy deal. I was going to have to pass it up. So the next morning, I was bummed out. I said, I'm going to go get it. I got to go get that bike. I don't care if I push that thing home. He already sold it. I missed out. You know, I burnt that bridge. And I was like, I was heartbroken. I said, what am I going to do? I sold my bike, sold my Kawasaki. To, and I was just bummed out about this, not having anything to ride with my son. I am like, oh my God, I'm going to have to get me a bike that I don't. That's not going to be a Harley. Probably not going to like it. I should have just kept my bike. And, alright. So, that day, I missed it out. Yeah, I I had to run my kids back to their mom. So, I dropped them off. Woke up the next morning. Super bummed. Um, I was like, I got to get a bike. Midlife crisis. Pull my crypto out. Everything. Get a damn bike. I don't care. Did the biggest mistake. I went to Mad River Harley out there. Beautiful bikes, of course. Harley dealership. I mean, come on. You, you know what you're getting yourself into. I've owned a seriously 150 car title in my name. I flip cars and everything. Cars that I love. I knew not to go to the dealership. But I, like I said, I'm desperate. I don't care. So I go there. Talk to a guy. Everybody cools out. Love everybody. I get along. I try to get along with everybody. So we're all bullshitting and cool guys. They show me a Sportster outside. I said, this is the cheapest bike I got. And it was about $5,500. I don't even know what year it was. It was a piece of crap. It was it was white. Black frame, though, so I could paint the tins on it. This thing was junk, okay? The fender was dented. Somebody bottomed it out or something. I don't know if they strapped it too hard to it. I don't know. This thing was rusted. It was junk for that price. I was bullshit with the guy. I was like, oh, I gotta go. Shook this hand and everything. So I rolled out, and I remembered Fox Cycles. Out there where I bought parts for my son's iron head. And I said, oh, gee, I'll just go out there and everything. Mind you, I'm 50, about an hour away, almost an hour away. And I stopped there. And I'm checking out some bikes. And guy Steve there, legendary. Legendary, man. My guy got that gator voice. And, oh, this dude is a character, man. Everybody there is awesome as shit. And I go in there, I seen him. And he was selling the bike. I didn't want to disturb him or nothing like that. But he said, hey, can I help you? What you look for? I told him, I said, don't punch me. Don't knock me out. But I got 
what was it, $3,000. I said, I got $3,000. I need a bike. He said, you want a whole bike or a half a bike? I said, I was hoping it'd be a Harley. We could take a half of a bike. I don't care. And he's, he's laughing with me. Shit, I think he showed me the door almost. And he said, well, let me find my buddy, the guy Tom there. God, these guys are legends at that Fox Cycles incident. That's, I mean, if you're around here, that's where you go. All right? I ain't even bullshitting, man. You got to go there. And that's coming from me. He'll build it by stuff on the side for nothing. So, talking to Tom and Steve. But family up in there, man. Cool ass cats, dude. So I'm bullshitting with them. And he said, well, let me take you off in the back. I said, that's where we need to go. Scratch and dent specials. I want something that the mechanics haven't even touched yet. And he said, let me find the worst bike we got on the property for you. I'd love to hear that. Oh, man. I was like, ooh, this is gold, boy. Give me something good. And <laughs> mind you, I was just probably going to be junk. I don't care. At that point, I was like, I'm getting me a Harley today. It sounds like, well, these guys are too legendary for that. These guys are awesome. So I go back there. We're walking through all these bikes. Okay, then the back, these beautiful bikes back there waiting to get cleaned up by the mechanics, I guess, and go to the market. I'm like, oh, God, these are all too nice. I can't afford this. And he said, no, on the three grand. Okay, he said, but I work with you. And then, like I said, I'm going to pull out all my crypto. I didn't care at that point. I'm walking in the back, and he said, there's your bike. We're walking. I'm like, where? He said, right in front of you. I, we just walked all the way in the corner. I swear to God, 50 bikes. And it's all the way in the corner. And he said, there's your bike. I looked down. I said, this bike? He said, yeah. I said, what are we talking on the price on this bad motherfucker right here? And I said, this is like 3800 I said, damn. Well, pulling my crypto, of course, there's fees. You know, Uncle Sam and all the everybody's got to make their cut nowadays, it seems like. So I didn't have that much. I had $3,500 to my name. And I wanted that bike. He said, here's your bike. I said, all right. That thing's by the motherfucker. He said $3,500. I said, would you be able to do $3,500, blah, blah, Swindle talked him and all that. Sweet talked his ear off. He said, yeah, out the door $3,500. I was like, I'm jumping on this. It needed a lot of work, okay? I knew that. I don't care. So I called the old man. It started getting, it was another cold, windy day. I'm an hour away. I didn't want to ride this bike. It started getting cold and windy. I wasn't motivated to ride immediately at that time. I said, can we get a trailer? He said, yeah. I ran home. Me and the old man grabbed a trailer. Ran all the way out to Fox Cycles again. Man, it's an all-day project. And Tom and Steve out there, them boys got me right. And I ended up getting me a damn 2001 Road King. You talk about projects. Boy, I got one. And I was like, okay, this thing can't run. Yeah, that damn thing. They pulled that baby right out front for me. I was fucking stoked. She is dirty. She does not run good. And here's the craziest thing of them all. I said, well, what's the deal with it? Why is it so cheap? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. 92,000 miles on this bike. All right. 92,000 miles on that baby. But I figured, hey, I don't care. It looks nice and everything. I'll rebuild it. I don't care. That's what I do. I, I'll keep this bike. Paint it all up. Call me the half dollar bogan. The 50 cent bogan up in here. I don't care. So, yeah. I, I love this bike. I love the people at Fox Cycles for getting me right. So, yeah. We got us a project. I already ripped the throttle apart. The throttle was sticking. I almost couldn't get on the trailer. Pooping and popping and all that. Couldn't even get the damn thing on the trailer almost. Big old brute Steve pushed me right up on there. And I was like, okay, well, there's a throttle cable probably gummed up. It's been twisted a lot. 92,000 miles. This bike's been twisted and rolled more than any damn joint I've ever seen. So I cleaned it all out. It was still sticking. I was like, well, I'll clean out the throttle body right here. <laughs> well, yeah, I cleaned that throttle body out and all the spring assembly ripped it all apart. Mind you, this was black from the blow the blow valves the over the crankcase valves and so i cleaned that all out and it was still sticky and i was like well it can't be the cable well, it looked very decent it was the cables 
So I took the cables out, cleaned them all out. What I use is turpentine. I use a big old jug of turpentine. I take them cables in and out, in and out in the turpentine. Then I move it over to a jug of motor oil, in and out, in and out. And as long as the cables ain't frayed, that'll bring it right back. Threw them back on. And now we got that. Beautiful, like brand new. So I'm stoked about that, one little piece at a time. Like I said, I just picked this up, guys, the other night, okay? I, was, I, I woke up a little while ago, got back up on it and working on it. Me and my son are stoked about it. So the shift shaft on this side, they're notorious for it, I guess. I got to order me one, so I'm going to be making me a trip over there. Fox Cycles, see my boys again, see if they can order me one. I can order one, but it's like a cheap Chinese one or something like that. I'd like to get, what is that, Motion Pro or something like that. You know, something I can get quick. I want to see if they got one in stock. I want to get the damn bike going. Um, The black, everybody likes it. I don't like the black, though. So, um... I, I watched the Million Dollar Bogan. That dude is a character, man. Savage, I guess. Um, I was going to do the paint scheme like him. The, I don't know what year you know, or the color paint code of it yet. But if y'all watch the Bogan, if y'all watch me bike shit, you probably watch him. And I know the Shade Tree Surgeon. Oh, what a character also. He has been cruising that damn thing around. So I figured I'd paint the bike like that. I got to get some apes on it. Not really apes. I want 14s. I don't know if you'd call those apes or not to me. Not really. So I got to get those on there. We're talking big monies though, man. I got shallow pockets. So yeah, it's going to be about $600 or something like that for that. I'm going to see if I can cut some corners and get them on there. But dude, I'm loving it. Woo! I am I loving it. Got the bags and seats for it. All good condition. The leather, leather hard bags. I was hoping to fiberglass style. That way I can paint it. But the bike was rough. The stripped, all the bolts were stripped for the air filter. So I had to drill them out and everything. Like I said, everything's kind of been a little rough on it. But again, that's what I wanted. This is the bike I needed. And I was like, oh, it's a big bike though. Fits me perfect. So I don't even care. The thing's great. I stood this thing up. If the... I love this bike. So, yeah, finally got me a Harley, y'all. So, of course, you can stay tuned for this new building episode. It's going to be some craziness going on. It's been cold. I'm still waiting for it to warm up. Shit, I hate running the torpedo heater. I haven't ran for a while sitting here bullshit with you guys. I'm freezing my ass off. So, yeah, I'm going to sign off on this one real quick and bring you back. Oh, I got, it's got turpentine in it. I smell a little turpentine -y. So, I'm going to empty that out and I'll bring you guys back and see what we got going on with it love each and every one of you savages all right i'll see y'all